I'm in love. Why did it say I'm not in love? So now it says I'm in love. Okay. Yo, dirt blocks. Shopping cart, dude. Let's go, I did it. Aww. Hello, hello, hello. Bro, I'm not joining the PlayStation party. Yo, Evan. Yo. Evan, go back to lobby. Why? We are gonna have game. I'm him. Yeah. You don't have to leave the party. What? To go to game channel. What? You, you did not have to leave. You can just, you know, on the very top when you click the icon thing? Yeah. You see my name, it says Fortnite God, all the way to the top. When you go to game on the call chat. Yeah. You, go, okay, press that, and it's gonna show Fortnite. And press Fortnite, and you don't have to leave the, you don't have to leave the party. That's why I did. You hear me, Denise? Can we play the new game? <laughs> That's why I didn't want to never know what to do. Should we play this game? Yeah, sure. What the f is that? I don't know. I never played it. Um, can we go in and game um the call chat? Why? Because my thing keeps on glitching when I hear you guys. I am not playing that. Oh. 
Color your words, shake, spray, dry, gray, kiss it, bye bye, barrel, it's so me. Yum. Chili cheese. Chili cheese to yum. Shut up, dude. You shut up. Let's see what every typical gamer's doing. Hey guys, so I'm in London, England. I'm actually here for the Dumb Ball 3000, which is a kind of rally with really cool cars. This isn't about that, though. All right? I did something. I, I missed you guys. And I really, really want to make a video that I bought something pretty crazy. I bought a mobile traveling PC. Now, what does that mean? Let me show you what it means. Hey guys, so it finally happened. I 1v1 speed, and this is what happened. We played a best of five rounds, and things got very interesting, so make sure to watch the whole thing. Yo, yo, you ready for this? Yeah, I'm ready, bro. Come on. Speed, you're not winning. I play this game every day of my life, bro. Nah, like, that's, come on, bro. And, and I'm 30 speed. Come on, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. There we go, all right, all right. Okay, who y'all got? Typical gamer. Speed. Speed. I'm about to bust you, bro. I'm not gonna lie. There, I'm telling you, there's no chance, bro. You're washed. You're washed. Yeah, you so good, right? Mm-hmm. You're gonna get clip speed. Oh, man, my editor. <laughs> my editor crazy right now. Bro, why am I editing? It's like so rusty, bro. Like, oh. Tad, should I let him win the first one? Come on, man. Come on, let's get right. Okay, you, you want me to be, you want me to act easy on you or what? You're not good, bro. <laughs> like, why are you trying to act like, like... Oh, I thought I boxed you. Where are you going, bro? Are you going to the ceiling? Oh, it is. Oh, I'm shooting a little, little feet, bro. I know I say this a lot, but this. I know I say this a lot, Wesley Watt, but people need to use your code. I'll be right back. I use your code, Wesley. Give me a shout out or something. Let me join Smart Squad or Giga. Giga. You thought I said it? I said Giga.
Mistakes. Alright, what are we gonna do in that stream? Weapons were dumpster filler. Number five, 
E-11 blaster. It's no wonder stormtroopers never land a shot. Number four, the dual crossbow. An interesting weapon that was only useful against the sideways monsters. Number three, the charge SMG. We don't talk about the charge SMG. Number two, the primal rifle. This weapon had crazy damage. Good luck hitting anything with it. Number one, paper bomb kunai. Deku can smash, Goku can blast, Naruto dealt 35 damage if you actually managed to hit someone with this thing. But did you know, these weapons are the worst. Let's hope- This is the worst weapon ever. I can't do it either! I am gonna roll out of here! Dad? Okay. Hey, Dad. Nothing. Uh, Nothing. What are you doing? What are you doing? Mm. Okay. Nothing. I don't know. No, not yet. Okay, love you. Love you too. Bye. I said I love you too. Love you too, bye. I'm excited that I can announce that my old friend, a fantastic actress, a badass, is joining the Netflix family in one of my favorite shows. And I know that you love this show too. She sent a video, and I want you to watch this video. So enjoy your time and have a great, great weekend, okay? Bye bye. See you all. Hasta la vista. Arnold, thank you so much for getting this video to to do. I am Linda Hamilton, and I am so excited to share this news with you. I'm joining the cast for Stranger Things 5. 
I don't know how to be a fangirl and an actress at the same time. I'm going to work on that. So, good to see you, Arnold. Let's get dinner soon. And everyone else, I'll see you in Hawkins. From the get-go, Scream 6 seemed to be promising an installment of the franchise that was unlike anything we'd ever seen. on society's relationship and reactions to horror movies. Screen 2 took aim at the disappointing nature of sequels. The third film talked about Hollywood's relationship with sex and violence in the fairly scathing format. The reboot of the fourth film depicted society's fame of the state. And the fifth film featured a slam on the toxic fandoms of both franchises. Screen 6, meanwhile, seems to take aim at the sensibility to organize us. Creating false narratives to present a desired image of a person, despite whatever the truth may be, as evident through the monologue delivered by the terrific trio and their efforts to present Sam as a real Woodsboro killer throughout the movie. And yes, the film does hone in on this issue and offer its own commentary on it, but it could have been so much better had they switched the killer out to be fan favorite legacy character, Gail Weathers. And for a minute while I was watching the movie, Friends, before the release of Scream 6, you can watch the full story of the Scream series in this video. To make one video, I had to... Billy 
Loomis was born in 1978 or 1979 is the son of Henry Loomis and Nancy Loomis. Henry was once a lawyer for the movie studio Sunrise Studios, but in April 1974, after helping the studio escape from a lawsuit regarding one of their actresses going missing on set, he left the studio and moved up north to Woodrow, California, where he met Nancy. Unfortunately, he could not leave his scandalous Hollywood life in the very he cared about for Billy Thorne and had an with a woman who also fled Sunrise Studios for a quieter life in Woodsburg. Her name was Maureen Prescott. As little did we know, Maureen was quite the trend. She had a secret son named Roman who was secretly watching and videotaping their broad daylight encounters in cheap hotels. When Billy's mother found out about the infidelity, she split up with Henry and skipped town, leaving behind Billy with his father. As Billy describes himself, maternal abandonment causes serious deviant behavior. However, he managed to keep in respect of his father, so fairly popular in school. He had developed a love of school, and was partially intrigued by his dad's former career at some of the studio, and he has a group of friends who share this passion. Because of his cinema and his inability to cope with abandonment, he's an easy target when he meets Roman sometime in 1994, who is now an up-and-coming music video director who similarly could not get over being forgotten by his mom. He showed Billy the footage of Maureen and Hank having the affair, and even helped him plot his revenge. Because Roman was a director looking to get into feature films in the future, the idea is to really to sell out of Casey Bad Law and finding someone to stand for his crime. Billy chose his easily pure credit for his student doctor he had accomplished and decided to frame his subject to